we are live. What is up, everybody? It's another Saturday. I uh, hope you guys are doing great. <clears throat> I um, uh, am, you know, excited about doing this next stream. So, welcome to the stream. Uh, if this is your first time watching, this is week five, so you should probably go back and watch the other four first. But uh, this is a polishing stream. So the idea for this one is that <clears throat> we have now established uh, three different pieces of art. We have two key arts and that prop sheet that we didn't get to finish, but we're going to act like we did. And then um, take them, put them into our new art, our art Bible that we made in the first stream and refine it. And then go back to our key piece, which is the first piece we made, where we have uh, Yukiko meeting the Kitsune spirit. And we're going to polish that up and make it a bit more clean just for um, presence, presentation's sake, you know. Um, so, please forgive me if uh, I sound nasally or I have a cough. Just got a cough out of nowhere this week. So, uh, I am just going to keep popping these cough drops and we're just going to push through it. <laughs> uh, now, so, for the... Um, for the introductions, my name, in case this is the first time you've watched the stream, my name is Josh Durham. I'm an art director, concept artist. I've been at this for 11 years now. And uh, background is in game and film. And we are making this project together as a way to show how art directors think about like approaching a project from scratch or think about um, designing their own project in the future, etc. Uh, normally, if you're an art director, you have a team of people to work with, so you're not doing exactly everything by yourself, but if you're a smaller team, uh, you do have to wear multiple hats, and you will have to do multiple aspects of design yourself. Um, so, yeah, so uh, last time we ran out of time, um, or not last time, but the time before that, we ran out of time, so I wanted to try to limit ourselves here. Um, we only have three hours, you know, one to four four-ish EST. Um, so I want to spend somewhere around 30 minutes, uh, just first off, fixing, or not fixing, but refining the presentation that we have of the art Bible at the moment. Uh, just the way that it's laid out was very quickly, I just very crappily threw it together because, uh, you know, th this was our research stream and Everything's kind of just thrown in here, and it's not thought about like presentation and how easy it is to read. There's a lot of gaps in between images and text. Uh, there's like however many pages. There's 31 pages when there really does not need to be 31 pages. It's just a bunch of images taking up space. So we're going to take about 30 minutes or so, and we're going to um, try to condense it a bit. Uh, definitely don't want to present something that's 31 pages if you don't have to. So we're going to first off go to layout up here uh, and just go to orientation, make it landscape. <clears throat> you don't have to do landscape. Uh, landscape just kind of helps with visual pre uh, presentations because you have images are usually like 16 by nine if it's a game or a film. So they'll look like this versus these vertical ones. Um, so it just makes it a bit cleaner, I think. Uh, so what we can do is we can keep the um, narrative on its own page. Uh, this gives it some clean space of like, welcome to the project. This is definitely not the name of the project. I just had that there as a placeholder. The name I was thinking would be Snowfall um, because Yukiko meets the fox spirit who we're gonna name uh, Aki. Well, her dead brother was named Aki, so she named, so the spirit's named Aki as well. Um, Aki in Japanese is fall, Yuki in Japanese is snow, so she's kind of like, this name kind of means snow child, and this means fall. So I'm thinking snowfall kind of fits thematically, and uh, we can kind of have like a narrative connection to the visual style that we've established of the orange and blue, or the, well, you know, the warm fall colors with the cold uh, snow feeling in the shadows. So let's <clears throat> separate the narrative to its own page, just for clarity's sake. Um, 
And then for something like this, you don't need these images so spaced out like this. What we can do is we can go ahead and just make them in front of the text so we can adjust them freely. This again is uh, <laughs> the Word, Microsoft Word, so it's not like the best way to design something like this, but uh, it does, um, you know, it does work like roughly. Uh, so you can do in front of text if you want, but another good thing to do is if you do something like, hey, T Scar, how's it going? I think you're the first one here. <laughs> um, so if we if we make it tight, I think. Uh, God, this is horrible to look at. Hold on, one second. If we, there we go. So if we make it tight, you can see that the text will actually move around the image, which adds a little bit of like a cool like graphic design feel to it. So what we can do is we can use that uh, in our descriptions. So first off. This one, oops, this one needs to be over here. This is gonna look gross until I move everything around. So hold on, I promise <laughs> it'll be fine. Meg, nice, how's it going? Uh, all right, cool. There, it's perfect. It's perfectly presentable, just as is. Uh, all right. Um, so we have graveyard listed here. You know, locations. We want to make it clear and we have color harmonies. Uh, these images are going to go into the color harmonies. So we want them to be somewhat like that. I'm just going to space this out. There we go. And then uh, doo -doo -doo, we can grab this one, bring it probably like that. Just give us some space here. There we go. And then bring. Mm, yeah, okay. So then what we'll do is we'll bring key code down here, make it a bit smaller. And you'll see I'm trying to condense space. Uh, and not not so bad that it's like hard to look at, but you definitely want to have uh, a less is more kind of idea when it comes to this. Um, I think this is fine. I don't think we need the Kana one. So we can probably just get rid of her unless we, well, no, we don't really need it. All right, so we get rid of her. So um, this is just a good example of color harmonies described onto one page without having like a bunch of crap in your face. Um, so number two, locations, right? So we got the graveyard. Uh, so let's go ahead and start doing these. Now with this idea, what you can do, uh, which is kind of fun, is you can, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm like half dying over here as I'm trying to speak. So you can uh, <laughs> you can take the text and use it as like a frame for the image. So you can have something like this, where as it's talking about the image, the image is right there. Picture like those textbooks you had in school, where it's like, uh, I don't know, talk about World War II. And it's like, yeah, and then the, um, <clears throat> the allies did this, and it had like a picture of the war next to the text. So same thing, where you want it to be, you know, pretty clean on how how it's presented. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be um, read in this way. This is just a, a way that I've done before that seems to work pretty well. Um, now, if you are doing something important in the text, let's say, uh, um, just clean that up. Let's say that you want to point out something, right? So like the Kitsune Shrine is very important because this is about the Kitsune spirit. So what you can do is first put, take that and put it uh, at the beginning and then just bold that line. So if you bold that line specifically, uh, which is in home, yeah, bold. So now you have, it's like Kitsune Shrine and then everything else is just details around it. This may not seem like a major thing, but if somebody is just reading through your document real quick, um, having the main key element of that text bolded at the beginning kind of helps it just like stand out first so they, they get the gist before they read everything else. Um, imagine that bolding text is like the key art 
and then the rest of this is like the supplementary art. Like that's what you really want them to know. Um, so we're gonna just, we're just gonna, the text thing isn't working well here. Like I don't think it's reading well simply because I don't have a lot of text. Uh, so I'm going to just split it up and try to put as many images down here without it being cluttered as possible. And then also kind of line them up with each other. Doo, doo, doo. Now again, you could use like a uh, Adobe InDesign or some other you know document presentation. Uh, I personally just like Word because it's very much uh, basic <laughs> it's, and uh, just easy to kind of rough out something without worrying about exactly like is everything exactly perfectly uh, designed and then whenever I get to that point where I'm like all right I really want everything to be perfect then I can uh, then I can go ahead and start let me just give some space there then I can go ahead and start um, you know like worrying about the exact details of everything and the exact dimensions make sure everything fits uh, we're gonna delete mm. Yeah, we'll delete that. So we're going to use this as just a, an idea for how we were thinking about the graveyard. And we're going to line it up at the bottom, try to center it. There we go. Cool. And now this we can push to the side. Oop. Can we center it? Mm. Yeah, let's do it there. And then we'll move this one to there. There. Now you just got like a fairly representable uh, example without it being like crazy. Now because we do have more images, we're just gonna uh, play with these a bit. Now these are not near text at all. So these we can kind of uh, take creative liberties with. I'm gonna delete one of those. And um, what we can do is, uh, oh my God, look at this. Doesn't that look great? <laughs> Uh, what we can do <laughs> is uh, first give us some space. Thank you. All right. Now we can, uh, I think it was this one. Yeah. There. So now what we can do is make this an empty page just by hitting enter a bunch. And we can throw all these onto one page and uh, get a bit creative on the presentation of them, you know, like on the actual layout of where they are. Uh, you want to kind of just have them all on one page if you can, simply because people don't like, uh, you know, flipping through a thousand pages to find your whatever you're, you're talking about. So um, this one is very wide. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, we talked about 70-30 before, so I'm going to kind of do that using this. Uh, format. So I'm going to have this image probably smaller and like there. And then this image uh, probably like there. But you can see that uh, this one is lined up with the edge and this one goes over the edge here, this little frame. Uh, there's not like a reason for that like as, as far as um, you know like a right or wrong way to do things it just looks cleaner if you could make it match the edge so uh, what we can do is we can just crop in word and just bring it in to the edge like that and then boom don't have to worry about it um, now what is cool about words crop is that it's not permanent so if I go to crop and then I just drag the image I can physically just bring back whatever I cut out without it being stuck like that forever. Um, so you can like reline up the shot or something like that. Um, so we've now condensed the graveyard into two pages and now we have the city. So let's, uh, let's give us some space here. The city, uh, we have two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight images. Uh, we probably don't need this one. And 
this last piece gives us the idea of slums without the air conditioning one, so we probably don't need that either. Um, well, yeah, probably not. And then, um, mm, uh, yeah, yeah, that's Asian, this is science, yep, yeah, okay. I think, I think this is fine. We probably don't need this one because I wanted it to feel dense, so we don't want to show like this happy kind of like utopian city. So we're gonna get rid of that one. And yeah, okay. So we've condensed it down to four. Uh, so let's go ahead and just quickly fix that up. So if we bring them down here, we can probably put that like here and then do the same with this one. Just line it up. Mm -hmm. And then we can crop it just to make it fit the idea that we got going on. One, one more pixel, there we go. And then probably bring, honestly probably don't even need, we probably don't even need this underpass shot. So we can, all right, let's give it some space. So we can go ahead and just uh, make this all on one page somehow. And to do that, we'll probably have to get creative with the layout unless we can crop this down a lot. I don't know, let's see. So if we go to crop, we can just make where we want it to end, which is there. And then drag the image to where we want it to be. So something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's fine. You know, whatever. Uh, it's centered, but this line right here is not centered. The separation between these, this image and that image. So I'm thinking, um, you know, if you were actually doing this, you would probably want to make that centered. Uh, but because I'm trying to do this in 30 minutes, <laughs> I want to leave it. Uh, so we have now condensed the city page into one page instead of multiples. And uh, we can also, by the way, uh, replace one of these with our shot that we made ourselves. So we can probably take this image and change the picture with this image over here. Whoops, there we go. So let's get rid of that and go ahead and do that. This will be the image we made uh, on the last stream. Now, in theory, no, we'll be right. Trying to figure, I'm trying to imagine where would it fit best as far as like layout on the page. And I guess it'd be fine here. So we'll just, uh, we'll just try to get it as much as we can in there. There we go. And then this one we can push over so we can get their whole image in there. There we go. All right, so let's crop this. Cropity D, cropity da, there we go. And then crop the edge to match the frame. Boom, boom, cool, sweet. All right, so we now have that. Um, is, that is that diagonal? No, it's just a weird illusion. All right, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, so now it's definitely off center to the left now, but it's fine. So we have our city shots and we have the characters. We haven't done a character sheet or anything. So we're just going to uh, use the images that we found online. Um, so we have a couple here. We don't need this jacket piece. Uh, that doesn't really tell us much. We probably don't need this or this. This one's fine, I think. Cause uh, it gives us this like modern feel. It does feel a bit 
French though in nature, simply because of the um, the the like wooden tone with the cup of what looks like cherries. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think that's too like posh for our character to dress like that. So we want her to have this kind of street feel, uh, this urban uh, street clothing. So we will probably just have these two images. That's all you really need. Um, and then whenever we actually designed a character sheet, we would come in and replace them. So let's bring those bad boys in there. Let's do like, whoops. Let's bring it down to like here towards the center and then do the same thing with this one. Give us some space between that. Thank you. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Let's line that up. Okay. Cool. And now uh, the Kitsune spirit itself, the fox, uh, we can go ahead and just do probably not this. We don't need this. Um, we don't need that I don't think we definitely don't need the images of the real foxes we could probably just do hmm hmm probably get rid of that one and just have these two these three images so uh, let's just play with those. So let's put this one up here, this one up here, and this one there. Make some space. There we go. So now we can shrink that bad boy, probably there. This is the vertical one, so we're going to put it like up there. And where did our third image go? Not sure <laughs> where our third one went. Uh, oh, there it is. Move that up there. So um, we could probably just play around with this orientation. If we make it vertical, match the edge, and then probably bring it a little more center, match to here, and then have this kind of match the width of that shot. There we go. Bring it up to the frame. And then we're going to take this one and crop it to bring out our little spirit one at the bottom some more. There we go. And now we can take this closer in. Same here, same there. There, there we go. So now we have the Kitsune spirit represented on one page. Didn't really have, you know, much other information than what we already wrote. Um, you know, with the spectral flakes. I want to, I want to coin that term. <laughs> Uh, so now the fantasy is the last thing we have to do. Uh, this is just an example of like the magic in the world, what it feels like. So what we can do is we can simplify what we're showing here. We definitely don't need all of these images. So let's do, um, let's get rid of that. Don't need that. Um, probably don't need that, 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 or that. And then, hmm, we definitely want to keep these two of the animals just to kind of give the feeling of like what we're thinking about. And then we want to add this with Kana. So we probably don't need, 
think it, you know what, let's just keep all four of these, that's fine. So, uh, let's just put this here, like there, whoops, like there, and then let's bring this up. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because what we can do is we can uh, we can put that there, and then lay this up in the center, and then crop this a lot, all the way to like here, and then have take the image and just recenter it. That's fine. There we go, and then we can probably fit another one on the left but you may actually just leave it like that okay so let's uh, make this a little bigger center it make this a little smaller center it there we go and now uh, we do the same thing with this just for consistency And then this image as well. Word really is not like the most intuitive tool to use for this, but it definitely is something that I'm just used to using. So uh, whatever you're used to using is, is better, I think. Uh, there's not like a right tool to do things. That's why there's so many different game engines and so many different painting softwares. Like it's whatever you're just comfortable with. Um, there we go. The only time that there's a right and wrong way for software is whatever your company's pipeline is, you will have to do. So if your company is like, we only use, <laughs> if your company is like, we only use Microsoft Paint, then yeah, you're probably gonna have to use Paint. And uh, uh, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> um, now, we have essentially refined, very roughly, refined our, uh, art Bible into a more clean and legible document. Um, we have everything established here. Now, we do have two more images that we made. The prop sheet, I don't think we need to include in here. If we had a prop section um, or like a more detailed art Bible, we could throw it in there. But for right now, we're just gonna throw this in there um, wherever, wherever it went, where'd it go? Oh, I just threw it at the bottom. Okay, let's bring that up to the top. Come on. Come on. There you go. Um, so we're just gonna take this piece, that rough sketch that we made, the very first, or the second stream, the first key art stream, and we're just gonna use that as our, like, you know, like our, um, look at my game, right? look at my movie, like we have, we have this one piece that should represent like the whole vibe of the story um, straight from the get-go. And I think this is a good piece to do that with. So we can just go ahead and just throw that right on the front page. Try to make it front and center. Um, if it'll give me the center line, come on. Should be like here. And then we'll make it a little bit smaller. There. <coughs> so we now have like, check out my project. And then there's a narrative with a following piece that kind of just gives you the general ideas straight off the bat. And we did all that in, look at that, 30 minutes. Um, cool. So now we have an actual, you know, something to follow, easy to read. And we went from 31 pages to uh, nine which is definitely a lot more manageable. So, um, you know, this is, this is just a vague example of what an art Bible could look like. Uh, everybody's will look different. Um, like some people will condense everything into a, like four or five pages if you just want like a lookbook kind of style where it just shows a bunch of different images but not a lot of text. Um, 
I I saw I think it was I forgot the project, but there was a project I saw the art bible on, and it was like extremely detailed, where it felt more like a game design document, um, where they combined the visual storytelling of what they were trying to accomplish into the gameplay design as well. So like, instead of it being nine pages, it was like 20, 30 some pages, but that was because it was doing two jobs. Instead of it just instructing people on what the art looked like, it was also where they put how the game played. So, and like how the visuals would react to the gameplay. So uh, you essentially had two different documents that they just put into one. So really, like, it's completely different um, ideas based on, like, just who you're working for or who you're working with, either way. Uh, so, you know, I'm just, like, just try to make it clean. That's, like, a good rule of thumb. You definitely don't want it to be too crowded. You want it to be something that's, like, super easy to go through. Let's say you hire artists and you're like, hey, um, we're working on the graveyard today. They can just scroll down your document, go to the graveyard, and they have some text with some information and then some visual references to understand like what you're trying to make. Um, that's I think it's just a good rule of thumb just to keep it clean and uh, easy. Now, some people will also take the de the design of the document itself and make it closer to the actual visuals of the game. And what I mean is like. Um, Think about, let's say, like Cyberpunk. Um, if you have, if you pull up the Cyberpunk UI, it's like, uh, looks like, um, uh, I don't know, uh, just do Fallout instead. Fallout screenshot. So if you look at the HUD here, you have this uh, green, you know, digital retro HUD. So like their their art bible may have this kind of font and then the green coming in so that way they can kind of tie in their actual art bible document into the universe that they're creating so that way it's not just you know generic what calibri font <laughs> you know like they'll actually um make the font whatever they want it to be and then try to make the whole project's feeling come out through the art bible itself not just the images but also like the text and, and that's where the graphic design part comes in and that's where like indesign will help you kind of push it or like other softwares word is more just like a rough sketch like your boss comes up to you and you're like we need an art bible by tomorrow and it's like all right well i'm i'll just <laughs> i'll just throw it all into word real quick and then we'll uh We'll take it from there and then polish it up later before we hire more people that need all this information. So that is the art Bible. Um, that should be pretty much everything just for like a basic, quickly roughed out, you know, art Bible. I think this covers everything that you pretty much would want to cover. Um, now, would I take this into a presentation? No, I would not uh, because one, um, it is very basic, like I said, so you definitely want it to have more of your images in there, not just a bunch of images you've taken online to show examples. You definitely want to have more of your images that you've designed in there. It's one, because it shows that you've actually put the thought into the project. You didn't just come up with an idea and just grab a bunch of images. And then two, um, it lets you actually show your project, like what your project will look like. You can have a bunch of images and comparables to um, other movies or games of, and like similarities, but if you don't have some images showing what your specific project will look like, then you're going to run into the problem of uh, people n may not know what you're talking about, where they're like, yeah, I see these projects look cool, but what is your project? What makes your project different? Or... Uh, like how will your project sell? Sometimes a pitch deck um, will have, uh, I've created a pitch deck where it has a, um, because whoever you're pitching it to, like a producer or whatever, will want to know how much money they can make off the project. So um, in the pitch deck, I included revenue of that genre. So like, um, 
uh, say like a thriller or something like so it'd say like thriller genre and then I don't know 200 million a year and that's just like the general genre itself within film and shows and games on average for that year um, or not on average but like for that year's uh, estimate made like 200 million dollars and then they can get a gist of like all right so they're not doing a niche category uh, genre they're actually doing something that people are interested in so you kind of help sell your project a bit more by representing what it actually looks like because you did it and then uh, having some information in there to try to sell it because granted we're all making art here but the only way people are going to actually help you do it is if they can make money off of it so you do want to like present it in a way that is going to show that it will be successful um, or even if it's not like completely mind-blowing successful it still makes their money back if not a profit um, so that is the art Bible that is just a general general representation of one um, and like I said words just kind of rough things out design it more in depth later um, whenever uh, if you guys want to, if you guys want me to look at your art bibles and you know, uh, check them out for the next stream, feel free to post them in Concept Art, uh, the Concept Art channel in Discord. If not, that's fine. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I just wanted to let you know I'm not going to judge you on if you used basic font <laughs> because this is a, uh, this is very much a common thing to do internally until you have the project actually getting on its legs and then you start like really customizing everything to match your project your project because things change all the time so that's totally fine uh now we've done the art bible it's cleaned it's fixed up uh what about what else are we doing today what else are we doing is we're going to go back to this piece and we're going to refine it and clean it up with some cool things that we decided to add in later that we didn't think about at the time uh, now, one thing that is great for us is that because we did that prop sheet of the shrine in the middle in the same perspective, uh, which is, you know, straight head on, we can kind of cheat the system a bit here and uh, take our own art and photo bash it in there on top of the shrine to save us some time. Uh, now, this is not... Uh, you know, like this is this is not hard to do, um, but it does require you making two different pieces. So it's kind of like, normally I would just render it out on the image, but because we actually just made a shrine sheet, I mean, why not, right? Um, so let's get rid of everything that we don't want in here. And do, 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 select that. Whoops, there we go. There we go. Delete everything else, cool. And now we can uh, probably do like pin light because we don't want it to be, we want it to add some detail, but we don't want it to be so detailed that it takes away from the focal point, which is the two characters in the middle. Um, and if we just left it normal like that, then it would stand out a lot compared to like the messiness of the image. And we want to try to keep that in mind. Uh, so if we do like pin light and adjust the values of it, Go to levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something like probably there, I think is fine. Something like that. Yeah, so then it went from that to that. So you can see that it's still fairly much distract like it's still kind of distracting uh, we're gonna adjust the stairs a bit here um, do, 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 do. try to line it up with what we already had there we go um, it's still a bit distracting um, mainly because the lanterns so what we're gonna do is we're just going to reduce the values make it a bit darker so like Probably there-ish, like there. And then uh, we're gonna get rid of this gray that remained. Oops. There we 
go. And then we have our shrine cleaned up a little bit more before and after, you know, just enough to like put it there, but not have it be so crazy distracting. Um, now, what are some things that we uh, added later that we haven't put in here because we didn't think of it at the time? Because as a project developed, we came up with some cool ideas that we just stumbled upon. One of them is from the shrine, and it's these paper talismans. Um, if I zoom in here, it's these things, these like rectangle dubers here. They go like that. That's cool. And then this rope as well that comes across. So I want to try to continue that into the actual graveyard itself. And I think a great way to do that would be to have um, this uh, torty gate with uh, some talismans hanging on it. So we're going to have to do that. That's like number one. Um, we're going to add those around. And then what else do we do? Um, we got to change her clothes. We've, we've now designed that she wears a black jacket with the white and the red on it. So we're just going to change that real quick. That won't take long. Um, oh, and give her red shoes too. Um, and then we need to detail the fox out some more. Not actually like render him out, but just add some more flowy etherealness to him. Uh, and also fix his leg. His leg is a bit too thin at the moment. And um, uh, probably just fix the lighting. Because uh, right now it's very... Uh, uh, it's centralized lighting, right? But it's very kind of flat. Uh, there's not like a it's not like a really good light source at the moment. There's a hint that's coming from the top left, but we want to like really emphasize that. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it that we all need that we need to add in there. But we probably need to add some snow of some sort. Um, if not snow then we need to add some more like uh jutty grass like grass is like like uh, like this like um uh, so for example like down here we need to add some grass is kind of just like poking out like this just for some st um style to add to the image uh we don't have to do snow um there we go so like we did why is that oh because I'm on pin light layer duh there we go so if we added like some grass like that um, it'll add some more flavor to the image I think so yeah we'll debate on the snow snow should be added probably later uh, simply because we're gonna place it on top of everything so if we have if we add snow now, and then we start adding things on top of it, we'd have to add snow on top of that too. So I think we'll just leave it at that. Um, but I don't I don't know about snow. I don't know. I don't know if snow is actually necessary or not because this is like fall. So could be snowy, could not be snowy. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll figure it out. That's, that's what we do here. We kind of just stumble in the dark until we come across something. Uh, so I don't. I definitely do not need a quick video on how layers work. But thank you for asking. <laughs> um, all right. So let's do the talismans. Uh, talismans. I'm gonna do it in a separate layer just to make it easier to manage them. Um, you'll notice that last time. When we were working on this, I said that I see that this texture is broken here. Like this part of the support looks like it's a tree. I'm well aware of that. That's more of a, a style choice on my end. And then uh, I tend to make it match something. So like for example here, this looks like it's from the tree, but it also looks like uh, leaves are growing on the pole itself. So what I'll normally do is I'll use any kind of broken tree elements like this to just generate an idea for where uh, foliage would be growing on the pole. And then I'll 
blend it in and make it look like foliage is growing there instead of it just being like a broken Photoshop uh, problem. So uh, let's do the talismans first. Um, where they go, I'm not sure. I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking something like across the middle. So like uh, so for example, let's do some ropes on the on the pole. Um, probably a bit more flowy. Yeah. Now we can we can keep one that's like like that. We want the rope to be somewhat, um, you know, like uh, consistent in size at least in width, but um, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is uh, this is just concept art. We're not like making a making a um, like an like a marketing illustration or anything where people will yell at you. Uh, this is kind of just us playing around with some ideas. So we got that, that one's fine. We'll probably do another one down here. I'm trying to make it consistent in width, but not exactly consistent in uh, distance between the ropes, um, simply because it's more interesting that way, I think. Uh, it doesn't have, I mean like in real life, it would probably be pretty close to being the same distance, but I think it's just more interesting if it's not. Um, just because in general, people are so used to everything being perfectly spaced out that if something is not, uh, it becomes something more fascinating. Um, cool, I'm gonna put one going this way on the bottom and then this way on the top as well, uh, just to make make it feel like it's not just like crappily wrapped up it's like actually wrapped up for a reason like um like a uh sort of like a design choice from the people that wrap this thing um now i can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side i could to save time just duplicate it to the other side but uh it would be you know too symmetrical and i don't want that I want it to feel more natural, like if this is somebody actually did this. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna freehand it, and it I think it'll add more of a more of a character to it. Um, so again, we could go the opposite way, like this, where the rope will then come towards the image, um, you know, slanting down this way. It'd be a forward slash instead of a backslash. Um, but thinking about it, uh, I think it might look best if we just kept it the same on both sides as far as like the direction. Um, so if we went like that, and then kind of round it off from the edges here, just come around, do the same thing. that it's a bit too thick there we go so while I'm doing this very exciting <laughs> lasso tool uh, let's talk about some video games let's let's talk about this week alone really um, so Sunday night or Monday um, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink came out and I've already beaten it. <laughs> I beat it in like three days. But um, great game, like um, got like gorgeous game to look at. Um, it it just has a great art style to it. It has like this um, kind of illustrated art style, but it's like um, I don't know. It's like it's like all the textures are hand painted in some way, while still maintaining this 3d feeling to it um it's really cool and it, it kind of reminds me a bit of like uv art and what they did with rayman legends it's kind of like that um but super cool and gameplay's fun it's not like the most complicated game it's definitely not the hardest game in the world either um 
but it seems to be a, like the story was there for you to enjoy and get the story. And then the gameplay itself is really focused around the missions after the story where um, it becomes like uh, Monster Hunter where you kind of like go do a, a mission in an area and some friends can join you if you want, but then you come back and then you use like the stuff that you got there to upgrade your guys and everything like that. It feels very Monster Hunter-y in that way. Um, which, I, you know, I'm fine with Monster Hunter. Me and my friends played Monster Hunter World for a while. Um, they they played Monster Hunter World, World more than I did. Uh, but, I don't know. I also like Monster Hunter stories. I'm a, I'm a big fan of JRPGs in general. And uh, Monster Hunter Stories is cool because it's like a, it's it's just like a turn-based Monster Hunter game. So you still have this like element difference between the you know like if this guy's a rock, then water's you know super effective against him or something like that. Um, I think that's really cool. I've always been a fan of that. And then I really like uh, the story of Monster Hunter Stories. Pretty solid. Um, ooh, too thick way too thick let's do that again um but the gameplay itself was fun but what i really like when it comes to turn-based combat is a game like um sorry i'm, I'm trying to <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying to make a a natural kind of hangy rope here where it's kind of attached in certain areas so, but because I'm talking about video games, it's difficult. So I'm going to stop for just one second while I figure out this problem. One second. Okay, so this goes that way. And it goes like that. And then come back around. There, it's better. Okay, so, um, yeah, so so in JRPGs, whenever it's like turn-based or something, I really like turn-based with an input. So kind of like um, uh, Paper Mario, not the newest, not not the newest one, but like the old Paper Mario's, or um, even what was it, Mario and Luigi, the like Game Boy Advance games, where or um, is Game Boy Advance and the DS the um, Superstar Saga games, where it's kind of like a JRPG where you play as Mario and Luigi and you could like pick each other up, throw them over walls and stuff. Um, I really like those games because you can, instead of it just being like, I hit attack and then you just wait for the attack to happen, you can hit attack and then right before it hits the person, you can hit A or B or whatever controller you're holding and then um, like enhance the attack. So it becomes more of like an actual gameplay element other than like just hit an input and wait. Um, really like that. And one of my favorite JRPGs of all time is The Legend of Dragoon. It was actually the first one I ever played. And I have it here. Um, the PS1 actual case here. Uh, super big fan of this game. Um, very Japanese and the story is gets ridiculous but uh, gameplay wise it's turn based with uh, I'll let you look at the back it's turn based with um, that input that I was talking about so instead of it being like oh you go to hit him and then you just hit X right before it hits him and then it does like a little extra damage or so and this one it was actually combos so it was like a rhythm game mixed with the turn-based combat because if you go to hit, you'd have to hit X at the right time, but then you'd have to hit X multiple times. But it wasn't like perfectly in sync each time. You had to time it with their animation. So like it was actually kind of hard sometimes uh, depending on the attack. General character attacks were fine, but like the, dra the dragoon attacks where they get crazy, it, it got rough. Um, but overall... Phenomenal game. If you never played it, at uh, PlayStation just remastered it, so I I hundred percent it on there. Uh, not not like remastered, but they ported it to the PS Five uh, for PS Plus, and uh, it is great. Um, so yeah, um, of course it's meant for a CRT TV, 
and everything's widescreen, so it looks less great than it did before. But, um, you know, it, it comes with a filter you can put on, which is nice. Uh, so I, I have the rope laid out. I don't want the rope to actually be black like this. I just made it black to help me visualize where it is. Um, so I'm gonna grab some of this like paper talisman color and try to paint over it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Something like this works pretty well. Uh, we're just gonna add some like shadows in there, a little bit darker. Some like shadows in there, and then probably in this side, like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. And then we're going to add back the highlights on the edges here. Pretty bright because there's a rim light right there. On this side as well. Oops. There we go. All right. So then um, we are going to add the actual talismans. So for the talismans, we will just do that shape. I don't think there should be a lot hanging up here. So we're just going to have a couple of them kind of just doing their thing like there and then probably like four don't want them to take too much space on the image but we want them to be there um, let's do like here mm -hmm. and then probably one here There we go. And then control H, fill them in like that. <coughs> now, um, we will go ahead and probably brighten them up a bit, especially on the edge. It's probably. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so let's do. I'm trying to think, do I. Do I want them silhouetted from the lighting in the background? Or do I want them to have like their own value as well? Um, I'm debating on that. So I'm just going to, I'm just gonna rough out some general detail on them. Just enough to noodle it up. There we go. Bring out the noodles. Do the noodle dance. Okay. I don't know if you guys ever seen that show um, there was a show on when I was a kid called PB and J and whenever they had to think about something they said do the noodle dance because you use your noodle and it's crazy to me that that's that song because they play a song when they do it has stuck in my head uh, <laughs> since I was like six it's been like 23 years and uh, it is just every time I hear the word noodle that's all I can think about is doing the noodle dance um, okay so we have the rope set up uh, it is very hard to see at the moment uh, that is fairly easy fix if we just lower the levels make it a little bit darker so we can have it stand out like that where it's a bit silhouetted more or we can have it brighter like that and honestly looking at the the uh, thumbnail up there I think it looks better brighter so we're going to do that uh, let's go ahead and just honestly we just make it hmm. we'll just do highlights highlights make it too bright but we can definitely reduce the value a bit increase the midtones bump up the shadows make it a bit more gray because it's paper yeah it looks better so now uh, we could play around with these and see if anything looks better. Nope. All right, so that's fine. Uh, now that we have our new established color, we can go ahead <clears throat> We can go ahead and redo the shadows. Uh, color definitely helps with shadows. So if you change the color, you'll notice that the shadows feel different, even though the values haven't actually changed. Um, so we're just gonna do that. We're just gonna make it a bit darker here and here. 
bit here. Over there. Just a smidgen. Just a little bit. There we go. And then some here. Like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, let me just increase the midtones a bit more. Make it stand out some more on the edges here. Darken that. Darken there. Like that. Darken there. Like that. Darken there. Brighten that. Okay. So we um we have the talismans or the paper and rope wrapped around um now we need to fix this middle piece of it though because the the lighting on it right now is not not correct uh as far as on this right pole so if we kind of just get rid of that brightness that we just put in just do it right on the edge alone that should work okay and now the middle pieces the lighting on them is what's really thrown it off so if we just darken them a bit and then uh, take this rim light idea and see if we can't bring them out a bit something like this It adds a little bit of depth, and then also helps them stand out a bit from the background. Um, cool. Okay. May even make it more of a yellow tone. Mm. That'd be fine. So, we've got that going now. Um, all right, so now step number two is we're going to fix her clothes. You can see all three pixels of her face. Um, we are going to just go ahead and make it match closer to the image that we made before. Just a refresher. Uh, it looks like this. This is the one we made last week. Uh, come on. Stop it. Stop it. Her jacket looks like that, where it's like uh, black with white around the uh, shoulder and then about elbow length and then um, red sneakers. So we're gonna try to do that in the key piece, which is pretty easy to do because she's so small. Uh, so let's go ahead and just grab her jacket. Mm -hmm. Grab it here. I still like the undershirt poking through, so we're going to keep that. Okay. Now, we are going to make that black. Probably not that dark of a black. Probably like there. Okay. And then we're going to add in the stripes. So let's do one was on her shoulder, like here, and then the other one was towards the elbow, like here, and then match it on that side. A little bit right there, and uh, let's bring in that uh, kind of whitish. There we go. And then we can add some of the branches that were going down our arm. Like that. Doo, doo, doo. Same thing on this side, just a little hint at it. Because she's so tiny in the frame that it doesn't really need to be that perfect of a representation. We just want to kind of see for sure. Um, so we will fix the jacket, make it cooler, make it more natural. She's got her hands in a pocket, so let's do like a little emphasis that there's a pocket here. Um, like there, let's say there. Um, cool, 
cool. Let's fix the jacket a bit more. Something like that. And then fix it. There's a little bit of red that's coming through. There we go. And now let's give her some red shoes. Um, we do want to have some red on her. But again, she's so small that it's not like super obvious. Uh, so we're just going to place some red dots. And then for her shoes, we'll just do some like red shoes like this kind of thing. And then add some of the classic uh, white shoelaces. So she's got some fresh kicks going on here. And then we're just going to frame it like that. And then put some white shoelaces like that. Do the same thing here. And it looks like garbage up close like this. But whenever I zoom out, and your brain fills in the gap, it'll uh, make more sense. So there we go, there. So she is now uh, updated on her design. Um, I will say if we had the time, I would have probably, you know, um, focused more on like a different pose. Right now she's kind of chill. I would do more of like a uh, I don't know, reaching out towards a fox or something like that. But, you know, I think this is fine just as like an example of your project, just a representation. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, so we have her updated. We have some talismans added. Um, I will say that the bottom left and the bottom right of the image are a bit boring as far as like things to look at. The lighting is kind of flat on them and it's gonna need uh, some more interesting elements on it. So I think the talismans are a way to do that. If we kind of have like, uh, kind of have something like this where, let's say, whoops, let's say, uh, let's say we have like, I don't know, probably, First off, we could have some branches coming in like this, just to kind of frame the piece. But we could have like a, a I don't know, I don't know the word, like a like a stick. <laughs> hey, John, or uh, D D John, John. It's one of those. I swear. <laughs> uh, I think it's like a stick, and then you have this kind of like talisman, like a rope connecting it and then the talismans are hanging off of it like this. Um, we could throw those in there. I think that's kind of cool. But I don't I don't know. Like I'm looking at it composition wise and I don't know how helpful would it be or would it hinder the feeling of the piece. But I don't know, it kind of looks cool, I think. We just kind of had it coming in like this. And then, whoops, and then have some talismans hanging there. Maybe have it come down to like here, like that. And then do like that, maybe. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I'm trying to look at it as a whole, like it's as an entire picture. Um, I don't think that would work well here, because we got like this modern feeling and then and or um, like a you know like a graveyard feeling that feels more like a so we're like a um, almost like ritualistic a little bit, like having these like charms hanging off of like unorganized sticks. So I don't I don't know. Well, we'll leave that for now. That's that's so that's where visual production would come in or visual development where we um we have these ideas that like may work, but because we don't have a lot of time, um, you know, for the streams, I can't like explore every idea. So what we can do in an actual project is that if I had a team of like three artists or whatever, I would split up the artists and have them do 
um, whatever ideas they wanted, but then also some ideas that I had, I would have them explore so that way we can do them all at the same time. Um, and then kind of like have like a bunch of different options to choose from by the end of the week. And then we can go from there and see like what didn't work, what does work instead of, instead of just one person trying to do everything in three hours. <laughs> um, so, right. Um, we got talismans, so we could add some more detail to the fox. Um, but I think right now we need to focus on the bottom left and the bottom right. They're like the weakest point of the image, uh, and the bottom middle for sure. So if we go ahead and just grab the bottom middle, do like that, content aware. Um, that's not what I wanted, but it's not a terrible idea. So let's try, let's try to get rid of that brightness in the middle. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, so what we can do is um, we can kind of, it just, it just generated random stuff, but we can, um, we can use that idea, I think, and add some variety to the ground over here where it's kind of got this like, um, almost like a wet, like cold, damp ground feeling to it now because it's got some reflection, which is cool. Um, I think it's cool. So we can kind of just play with that a little bit. Um, don't want something as massive as this chunk here. So we're just gonna grab some of these surrounding colors, kind of blend it back into like a walkway. Um, we could probably, we could experiment at least with what if these are stairs here, just like a couple of stairs. Then you'll see I'm not trying to be careful with like where they are or anything. I'm just trying to get the spacing correct so I can see visually would it be cool if they were stairs. Um, and uh, the answer is yeah. If there's like just a couple of stairs, but perspective wise, it would take a lot of, take some effort to refix everything. It'd be like this. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to like picture, do we need stairs? Just like a couple of stairs. Um, or do we not need stairs? Stairs are interesting. We'll do some stairs. All right, so let's find an image of stairs. Um, I could just paint them out, but just for speed, uh, we're just gonna lighten McQueen this and kachow some stairs in there. Um, hmm. Let's see. Something interesting would be cool. Something like, like not just like regular stairs. Um, something with some like old graveyard feeling to it would be cool. And this kind of has that feeling. So let's do this. Oops. Mm -hmm. Download, there we go. Let's throw this in there. Uh, this is from Unsplash, by the way. I just went on Unsplash. And uh, let's see if that works or not. I don't know. Because we could put a couple like there darken it for sure and then deepen the values darken the values something like that make it wider something like that is cool I think um, and then we just kind of blend in the edge here get rid of that get rid of all of that I have noticed in these streams that I that like ninety percent of my uh, dialogue is just let's grab some of that, let's take some of this, some of that. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it is a problem. Okay, so cool. Now we have it like a little walkway here. I think it's cool. Um, you'll see that it's not like regular 
boring stairs. And it also adds some more of a uh, kind of cool, like, old graveyard feel. Um, so we're going to keep that for sure. Uh, we could try pin light and adjust the values of it and see what happens. So like there. And then something like that. Be cool. Kind of fade it out a bit just to give us some more neutral values to play with. We don't want it to be too harsh when we adjust things. All right. Now, because we still want the main character playing to stand out, we're going to make sure that that section of the image is pretty obvious. So, like that. Um, but what we can do actually is instead of that flat orange, we can play around with this, um, this kind of green grass we got going on now and go ahead and make a plane here. If I could do that, there we go. And then delete that, delete this edge, kind of bring in some of this rockiness and this unevenness, which is cool. All right, so we're going to essentially create our own lighting here by adding in some of that warm tone. That looks cool, like visually, that just, that looks cool with the pink, but uh, it won't match well. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep it just like a warm tone, um, not pink. Something like orange would be cool, but not that orange. Um, something like this works, I think. Something like that. Just trying to think. Yeah. Okay. So now what we can do is we can blend in the lighting a, a bit so that way it matches. Uh, we can color balance the layer itself, add some more blues into the shadow. Whoops, because I had that selected. My bad. There we go. So go to adjustments, uh, color balance, add some more blues into the shadow. Probably cyan's actually. Yeah, about like there. Some more that highlights going to be a bit more red and yellow because we wanted to match this like fall tone that we got going on here. I wanted to break the general values that we've set here. Midtones, probably a bit colder. It's like that. So before and after, you can see it stands out more. <coughs> um, yeah, it's a bit more harsh. Um, not sure if I like it that harsh. I think it's actually fine color-wise the way it was. We just need to uh, adjust the levels a bit, make it a bit more. Oops, bring the shadows in more. Not that much. Not that much. It's pretty fine. Okay, so now um, we have the middle piece. It fixed a bit, you know, it looks more interesting than what it was before. Uh, now we just need to add some more color to it because right now it's just all green. Um, so we're going to grab some of this um, orange and kind of try to plug that in. There we go. Try to like add that in. It's a bit too, too much, I think. There we go. Try to add some of that in there as a, a way to just like kind of blend in the 
fall colors into the ground as well. Um, there is no like rhyme or reason exactly to what I'm doing here as far as like thinking about where it goes. I'm just doing the same principle as whenever I added those people in the last stream where I want it to feel like a natural growth. So they're clustered a bit, you know, there's a bunch here, but there's less over here. Um, plants tend to cluster species together. So whatever species this is, that's growing this red, uh, they will kind of be in clusters. They won't just be like perfectly uniform all the way throughout. Um, so, you know, like if you are designing random plants or something like that, try to keep that in mind that they tend to work uh, in like splotches. Um, if you have, let's say, let's say you have uh, like, I don't know, a pond. So let's, like, you do like, I don't know, if you do, if you do something like this, right? Let's say you have a pond um, and then you're like, you want to darken it, so you darken it. it. Looks like this, and then you have like a like a highlight on it. I'll give you some reflections. There we go. So you can do stuff like this, something like that. All right. So you're like, oh, I have a pond, but um, I need these like lily pads in there. You know, the floating cool bits. So to do that, um, all you have to do is uh, first we'll just you know make some selections of where they would be. But um, think of them as a cluster, right? If you had them perfectly uniformed all the way around, then it wouldn't work well. Um, granted, in like a Zen garden or something, they try to keep them fairly uniform throughout, but uh, in doing so, it kind of removes the natural feel of it. If you're having this, this like natural pond, then you want to cluster them up. And you notice I have like a group here, a group here, a group here, one little thing here and then a group here and the reason why is because uh they're you know clustered up now even though I clustered them together you can see they're pretty evenly spaced out between the different groups that's also what you want to avoid so to do so i'm going to make this cluster bigger um just to kind of bring this in a bit more and then i'm also going to uh probably make it all one like that um there we go so then we can go ahead and add some lily pads on top of there. Brighten it up a bit in case you wanted to have like some lighting. And then now you have this feeling of like natural growth in the pond because it's been clustered out like a natural, um, you know, plant ecosystem would do. Are we going to use that in this shot? Not at all. I just thought I would explain more of what I meant with like plants grow together um, if there are certain species. So uh, that's just one of the things you pick up. You, you pick up a lot of like really useless, there are sounds useless and in information <laughs> like plants and their cluster behaviors <laughs> um, <coughs> in this in this line of work. Um, yeah, man. Um, yeah, I'm just doing these streams because uh, I noticed there's, I noticed there's a, there's a gap in a lot of like quality content for art directing. So I, uh, I wanted to uh, fill in that gap because whenever I first started um, concept art, you know, 11 years ago, there was nothing like there was. I mean, there was there was introduction videos where it's like concept art, speed painting, which I watched a ton of. I just try to like zone in on the idea, and then uh, I watched a lot of like Fang Zhu and uh, Gia Tapra, I think is his name, um, and like uh, Cube Brush, I think I think it was another one, um, and you know they're good for like explaining the process of concept art, but they don't explain like how to actually work in the industry, like how to deal with people, how to handle um, deadlines and stuff like that. So I wanted, I, you know, I had to figure that out on my own uh, just from experience. And then when I got to like actually art directing, uh, there was no videos for that either. So I wanted to have some kind of like uh, series explaining a bit of like how art directing works and like my process and 
I'm, I'm not going to say that it, my work is like my process is exactly the same as every other art director, but I will say that, you know, my process is this and this is how I do it. Um, just so for anybody starting can have a general idea of what's going on instead of it being just an empty zone where you're like, people keep talking about this, but I don't exactly know what's going on. So now I can, you know, kind of just help you guys out. Um, and it gives me an excuse to uh, make cool art. So, because uh, normally on a Saturday, I would not be painting. Uh, so you, it's, it also kind of forces me into making more art. So <laughs> it's a win-win for both of us. Um, now, I explained the pond. I explained my uh, thought process on how plants cluster together. Uh, so we now have the ground looking more interesting, but we need to blend it in a bit more. It kind of still stands out. So to do that, uh, we are going to grab some of this green, this bright green here. Um, and we're just going to vaguely rough it in. Uh, again, this is going back to my um, my example of in the last stream, <laughs> the uh, the idea that if you're painting in something just to detail it in, and it's environment wise, uh, even if it's not environment wise, if it's um, a character and you have it where you want your brush strokes to remain visible, you're not going to remove them then make sure that your brush strokes or don't you know scratch that i said make sure don't i don't want to be like my way is the, the only way don't do that um but a good way to do it that i found is that if you follow the um the actual surface of what you're painting the direction of your brush strokes follow that then it helps a lot oh no my mouse is dying let me put that over there if you um um so, so for example, like if I had uh, this this ground piece over here on the left, this piece. So if I wanted to paint on it, I would go this way, right? And the reason why is because I'm following the perspective of that actual object. So that way, as I paint on it, it's creating this surface uh, within perspective. And the same thing that if I go vertical here. So if I'm going vertical, I would go like that. Um, and not just perfectly straight. I would just freehand it and try to match the um, the broken perspective of the image that I'm doing I'm doing it with. And the reason why is because if your brush strokes remain visible, then they kind of treat it. Uh, your brain kind of sees it as like a contour line, so it would create a bit of like an actual direction to the surface and to the image itself, because you'll have these lines subconsciously pushing people towards wherever you want them to look. Um, so right now I'm just going to add some green, just a little bit here and there. Uh, you'll notice I'm not uh, changing the value of it much. I just grabbed one value of green and then I'm kind of just placing it around. I am differing on how much I press down on my tablet here. So that way it's a bit darker in, in some spots and brighter in others. This kind of adds the uh, wet moss feeling of, or like damp feeling of the ground being kind of wet and reflective. Um, now we want to blend in this walkway because the walkway is perfectly, it's perfectly straight across right now. Uh, we don't want that. So we're just gonna add some grass kind of growing in there uh, to kind of break that up, make it feel more like <clears throat> the walkway has been cleaned uh, it's been cleared, but it's not like perfectly just not grown on at all. So we're just going to do that. We're going to give her her shadow back because I think we lost it whenever we adjusted the values. Um, let's do it like that. Okay. Put some shadow on her feet. Add some value to her jacket so she stands out some more because she is the main character. So let's do like... Um, let's do like some of this orange, this orangish red. Kind of bring that in a bit. There we go. Whoops. Something like that. Cool. All right. 
Um, so the beginning looks cool. This tree, by the way, right here, I saw it when I put it in. Um, it's cool, but I think we just need to adjust it. So if we just kind of break it up a bit like this, maybe a bit more natural like that, Oop. a bit more natural like that. Oop. Um, so now we have this tree. If we didn't have the tree, it's his leg. And remember I said we needed to fix his leg? We fixed it. <laughs> we fixed it by just covering it. Uh, now, that is a bit of a joke because, of course, this part of the leg is still visible. But, hey, they can't see it. We don't have to fix it. So, uh, we're just going to roughly clip over to his leg here and uh, try to emphasize that his leg is actually thicker than that but keep it in perspective uh, of like anatomy of uh, his actual leg, like hair, his fur. Um, so we're just gonna kinda do like that, some of that, whoop. All right, I think. So he's, okay, so he's like, he's down and this helps by the way in case I look weird. Uh, if you ever trying to figure out some kind of bone structure, just try to do it yourself. Of course, this is a fox, not a human, but think about like where his shoulder is and where his joints are. So that way you can kind of visualize uh, better, I think. So he is, he's, he's like, he's like down and he's like looking at her. So his, his leg is gonna be slightly bent uh, inward. Um, and his shoulder is gonna be a bit, is like that. So his shoulder is gonna be coming back. And okay, so <clears throat> so that means that his his shoulder bone is here, and his elbow is like here. So we're gonna have it come this way, like that, essentially. Um, so we can just we can probably just imply that by adding some little first strokes here. Um, we just have to make sure we do it in a way that it reads well. So he comes down and his little elbow fur is like here, like that. Um, this, I think, is causing an issue because it's perfectly lined up with his body. So it looks like his leg is connected to his body. So we'll break that off. Um, let's do like that. There we go. Cool. And then we can keep this keep the flowiness. Just kind of you know break it off of his leg, so that way his leg isn't so uh, obviously attached. There we go. Um, now what we can do is just emphasize that there's a leg there. Um, I think that reads better. It reads, it reads more like a, an actual leg, more like a foot coming this way. I think this is also causing an issue on the back end. Yeah, that's better because now he's, yeah, we're cool, we're good. Um, this needs to go a bit more like that. There we go. Because having like a vertical next to that leg is creating a weird tangent um, that we don't want. So, cool. Uh, we have officially hit the halfway mark, by the way. Uh, so you know what that means. It is music time. Uh, so last time we talked about Kate Bush and her epic Hounds of Love album. Um, and we talked about Sayuri, uh, because she is a phenomenal J-rock artist. Uh, I also have the Fully Cooly soundtrack. I don't know if you guys ever watched that show from, man, like early 2000s. But um, this show, Fully Cooly, FLCL is the uh, name of it. Uh, great show. Really big fan of it. Art style is phenomenal. And the soundtrack is like this kind of urban ish soundtrack. It's great. The only downside of that show is there's only like. I think there's only two seasons, or maybe three, 
but each season only has like four episodes. So <laughs> you're like, oh, this story is great, and then it's over. Like you're just instantly, like you just barely get anywhere. Um, great music though, and phenomenal uh, art style. Um, I'm, you know, I'm actually getting low on uh, records to recommend here because I keep going through them. Uh, hmm. mentioned um your boy uh <sighs> your boy Depeche Mode over here I don't know if you guys like Depeche Mode at all big fan of like 80s music and this is an actual this is not a reprint this is the actual 80s um was it 88 84 uh album so I just have it in plastic but this is uh Quite the jam. Big fan of Depeche Mode. They're, I don't know, they're just like chill, you know? Just chill, kind of new wave music. It's great. Um, da -da -da -da, we got Ghost in the Shell in here. We got, so we got some Evanescence. Can't go wrong with some Evanescence. I mean, you know. It's, uh, of course, Evanescence Fallen. got Frozen 2, dog, because Frozen 1 is great and all, but Frozen 2 visually is phenomenal, and the soundtrack is way better in Frozen 2. Um, let's see, we got, we got some, we got some Ghibli, I don't think I've shown you right, some Jupiter, depending on who you're talking to, but, um, we got, we got Mononoke here, Princess Mononoke, yeah? Great soundtrack, phenomenal movie as well. Um, straight from Japan. Highly recommend. Uh, very, you know, it's, it's it's Ghibli, so like the the, the story is gonna be great, and it's just gonna also gonna be really sad at some point and tug on your heartstrings. But highly recommend it. Um, let me get that back over there. Then we have. Ponyo, which I don't know if you've seen. Uh, there you go. Ponyo. So Ponyo is another uh, Ghibli movie. Great movie. Again, phenomenal soundtrack, phenomenal art style. Uh, and just honestly, like, adorable. The whole movie is just a good time. Kind of like Kiki's Delivery Service. Not anything... There's not, like, a lot of bad stuff that happens. The movie's really just adorable. Um... I will say one thing that I don't know if the camera will pick up. This is a double record. Um, it This second album has something cool on it. So, of course, this is side C, right? So you just got the regular, regular album. But I'm not sure if the camera can pick this up, but you can see um, this, this last side. They didn't have enough songs or tracks to put on there, I guess. So... They just carved into the actual record, um, like Ponyo on left and right here. They just, they just like carved it into the record itself. That that's really cool, and I'm noticing that that's starting to become like a thing, because uh, your boy was raised in the late '90s, early 2000s. So of course, uh, My Chemical Romance is, uh, you know embedded into my soul and uh i have the black parade album here let's see here so i have welcome to the black parade right um but the album itself just what the inside looks like which is cool but the album on the second one they did the same thing where they took the back side of it Again, regular album. So they took the back side of it, and they, like, this is really hard to tell, but they, like, etched in the Black Parade into the actual album itself, which is cool. I'm, I'm just moving it left and right because I don't know if the focus can even see it in the webcam. I have no idea. But, I don't know. That's really cool. Kind of 
useless in the way of like you know listening to the music, but as far as just something to have, something to put in the frame, it's pretty neat. Um, speaking of something cool, and then we'll get back to the painting. I swear. <laughs> uh, speaking of something cool, is uh, do 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 my chemical romance in Y is here. So uh, I have it alphabetized. So I'm, I'm trying to put it right back where it was. Uh, this is one of my coolest records. So they had a limited run of these, I think, um, of Mothra. It's the soundtrack for Mothra, the OG um, Godzilla movie. And it's a double record um, with this really cool inner piece. Um, now, why is this my coolest record that I think I have? Um, well, one, it's Mothra, and I mean, come on. Like, it's, it's your boy. But uh, also, the records glow in the dark, which is sick because the whole theme of like radiation in the movies. So you can tell, of course it's not dark, but you can tell that it's that like transparent, um, like, like light absorbing material, you know, and kind of like whitish uh, that glows green when it gets really dark. I don't have a black light that would really make it stand out. But if I did, I could imagine you put that on a, um, come on. Ah, oh, the classic, the classic problems of records. There you go. Is, um, if you put it on like a black light, I'm sure it would look phenomenal. But that's one of my coolest records for sure. Um, let's put that back. Let's see here. Mothra goes behind <clears throat> my chemical romance, which was here. Right next to Metal Gear, thank you. <laughs> so, right. The reason why we're here, not my music collection, the game, the, the, <laughs> the paintings. Um, <coughs> so, back to the painting. Um, we have touched on some things. We've added the talismans. Uh, the paper talismans are a bit like lost in the busyness of, of the scene. So we need to bring that back out for sure. And then we also need, we really need to fix um, the here and here. And there's nothing like technically wrong with them. I just think that at the moment, they're kind of like the weakest part of the image. Um, so what we can do is we can kind of darken them a bit and then um, add some more like interesting like growth on them, like a plant growth or something. Um, and uh, just, you know, go from there. So that is what we're going to do. Um, let's see. So we added some red there. We could, first off, I don't like this. Let's get rid of that. Whoops. There we go. And, um, <laughs> I, the talisman standing out is going to be when we do the value adjustment at the end. I just wanted to, uh, I think because of time-wise, because somebody has to talk about the record collection every stream, <laughs> uh, that we need to uh, we need to fix we need to fix the bottom left and the bottom right first and foremost. Um, hmm. How do we do that? Okay, so we could do some, I'm trying to think, I'm picturing it in my head. Do I add, do I add some of the red to it? So we have like a red kind of growing on things. I think that's fine, yeah. So we can have a little bit of this like reddish color kind of growing on uh, the moss that's on the statues. Now. I was talking about plants clustering together. Moss is a major one where of course it'll grow together uh, all over things. But whenever you wanna detail it or anything like that or light it, uh, you definitely want to focus moss specifically is usually lit from the top. Uh, so you wanna add any kind of color growth on top of the moss, not underneath. If you look at uh, that was it fairy moss, I think? It's like this purple, um, let's, let's find it, hold on. 
It's like a grass that people use instead of grass. <laughs> uh, purple grass alternative. Here we go. Um, what's it called? It's, the, it's it's this one. I just I just don't know what that's. Tell me, tell me your secrets. Creeping time. That's the name of it. So if you go to uh, creeping time, uh, it looks like this, right? So it's like a it's like a dense grass kind of thing uh, that only grows like a couple inches off the ground and it has this kind of purple color to it. And you can see that when it naturally grows, it has this um, it has this dude attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, when it naturally grows, it has this uh, purple kind of scattered a bit, but then some people will make it more decorative. Um, my point of this is that it's thick, so it has like this uh, grass underneath with the purple on top, because that's like where the flowers go. Uh, it feels more like a thick carpet than like a grass. So, same thing with moss. When you when you're dealing with moss here, you have this kind of like thick chia pet kind of material that's growing on a rock you want to focus on coloring the top of it and have this like darker layer underneath to make it feel more like it's actually you know thick it's growing there um just a little tidbit for you so that's one thing that's bothering me actually it's this right here whoops is uh this part was lit when we put the photo down but then because we darkened the values, it was unlit, um, which means this is too bright here. So we're just gonna content wear that out. Um, that worked fairly well. So that's fine. Uh, that's fine there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think, um, hmm. We could add some ropes to the um, to the statues, kind of like how they wrap the poles. They could wrap some of the some, some of the statues, maybe, possibly. Is that what we do? Is that what we do here? We add ropes to statues. Is that is that is that what we're doing? I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, one thing we definitely need to do is the framing thing I was talking about earlier, where we can have um, some trees kind of thrown in here. So if we pull out some trees, I have some masked trees here. Um, do, do, do. Do, 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 do. This is probably deciduous trees, conifer trees. Again, another stupid plant fact. Is the difference between trees conifer trees you can think of like up north pine trees they're like triangle shaped and then deciduous trees are like these where um, they kind of come out and they go into like a uh, circular top so if somebody ever asks you what did you learn today you can say that you learned the different shapes of trees <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah so let's uh let's throw in some branches here um Mm hmm. Hmm. Something like this, I think, would be fine. So well, maybe something like this. So see this uh this kind of tree. I like this middle piece right here alone. So we're just gonna grab that throw that in there. I don't know why that came out with a white background. I have dark mode on so I don't ever blind myself like that. Uh, Alright, so I am taking this masked tree. It's already been masked out. I'm just going to grab this piece. I don't want anything else really. Delete the rest. And then delete that little bit I missed. There we go. And then we're just going to kind of use that to frame the image a bit. Kind of throw in some Tree here, darken it quite a bit because we want it to be foregroundish. Uh, probably like probably like that, 
and then let's put it like uh, let's see there. Oops. Just gonna bring it in a bit. I'm trying to just frame the image, so I don't want to I don't want it to be too dark and too distracting, but I definitely don't want it to blend in with the rest of the piece. Uh, I like this branch that goes this way, so I'm just gonna follow that. That, there we go. Kind of bring it back in so this makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Cool, so that's fine now. Um, <clears throat> colors on it are too green, so what we're going to do is uh, a little trick, is if you duplicate the tree and do a, uh, let's say, lighter, lighter color probably, lighter color version on top of it, change the color completely with hue and saturation. Um, image, hue and saturation. And then just completely change it to whatever color you want. Let's say, uh, whoops. Let's keep it normal for now, just so I can see it change. And uh, hmm, there we go. Change it to whatever saturation you want and this, at this point in time, we want some like red and orange. So we're going to make it more like that. Hit OK. And now we can, we don't want it to be like so red. We want some green poking through. So you can do a little cheat where you uh, either put a filter on it, like lighter color or something like that. Or you can uh, just delete out, whoops. Or you can just delete out uh, some of that red and it'll show the green one underneath. So you like that. So you get a, you get Hannah Montana, you know, get the best of both worlds and um, it kind of fits the image a bit better. So then we're gonna merge those together. Merge, there we go. Now, um, it's a bit too dark, I think. Uh, so we're just gonna brighten it up a little bit, just a smidge. Something like mm, there. And then you can see this little line that's come up. See that like white line that's come around the layer? This tends to happen in Photoshop sometimes if you have a masked image and then you merge it with something uh, that didn't have a background, like if you merge it with another layer. I used to, like years ago, be so annoyed by this. Be, like trying to figure out how to fix this, right? Well, there's a couple ways you can do it that are way easier than what I used to do, uh, which what I used to do is I would take the mask, the uh, wand tool, and I would try to grab every little, <laughs> every little white pixel like this, and then try to get rid of it like that. And it took an eternity. Um, and in this field, you gotta be quick. So a good way to do that is if you, if it's something like this, which is just like almost one value, uh, you can just transparency lock, take the value close to it and just paint it. Boom, it's gone. There you go, don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but <coughs> if that is not an option, let's say you have, um, I don't know, let's say that's on like somebody's hair and they have like a bunch of color in their hair. What you can do is you can go to up here, go to layer and go to matting and then go to defringe. I don't know any other purpose for this part of Photoshop other than this one specific problem. You hit defringe, hit with one pixel, boom. It removes it without adjusting any of the values or anything. Now, does that always work perfectly like that? No. Sometimes Photoshop like gets rid of most of it, but not all of it. Um, however, in this, in, this, in this case, in this case, and also in this scenario, which is what I was trying to say, uh, it just completely removed it, so we don't have to worry about it, which is cool. Um, so, now, back to our less interesting bottom left and bottom right. Um, hmm. How do we make it more interesting? Well, um... We could, you know what we could do? This is, a, this is a fun one I like to do. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and merge everything. 
I don't think anything else is going to change. So we're going to make a checkpoint here. Whoops. Duplicate. Merge. There we go. So what we can do that's a fun little thing is um, we can see what content aware comes up with. Content aware, uh, I like to use. It is technically like an AI thing, but it's more like a... Uh, it only fills in a space based on what you've already placed on the image. So it's more like it still keeps it within your style. It's not just generating something from scratch. So if I just content aware this area, it's probably gonna look like a mess. Um, yeah, and it, and it did, it absolutely did. But sometimes if you're stuck, content aware is a good tool to like, see like that, that looks cool. That looks more interesting um, to like kind of janky fill in a space and kind of give you just like a different perspective of what it could look like um and personally they they took these two things here these two like pillars and brought them over here and then they also made this more broken down here instead of it just being a wall it's more like a broken area i like that so we're actually just gonna keep that the way it is um of course this like grass area is now broken so we need to fix that uh that's not a big problem we can do that pretty easily it, we may even just get rid of that grass to begin with because the fox stands out pretty well as is um in doing so though the there we go perfect nice that actually works really well all right so in doing so though this black bit right here that i was keeping in uh probably needs to get removed because it was perfectly lined up with the leg, uh, which is creating like a weird cut on the leg itself. Um, hmm. I don't know. It, it feels weird unless this value right here matches. If we can, if we could do that. Hmm. All right. Yeah. We're just going to get rid of this. We're just going to have the leg visible. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just we'll just uh mask in the leg here we wanted to come out to like a paw whoops to like a paw and then we don't want to see this part of it so we're just going to get rid of that some of that okay so now we can just rough in a leg go let's just kind of just do this kind of thing I'm just kind of noodling it in and then we're going to uh, remove the mask so that way we can just rough in the edge here add some more spectral detailing probably or probably just kind of come like this I think that would work too yeah, something like something like that's kind of cool. So we're just gonna just do it like that, okay? And then, um, hmm, kind of merge that in a bit, okay? And then we're just going to add some grass here to make it obvious that it's behind something mm -hmm. okay and now we can just noodle in some roughness here let your brain kind of fill in the space on um, where the leg actually is I have a hair that's bothering me stop it people are watching <laughs> um, all right so we got that, we got that, it's cool. I think that's good enough for a leg impression. Um, we have the ground. This looks more interesting now. We can see it before and after what it used to look like to what it is now. Uh, I think that's cool. We definitely need to add some more like obvious value change here. So we're just gonna darken some of this a little bit. Something like that, a bit of that there. Gonna brighten that up a bit. We 
go. Um, cool, cool, sweet. All right. Now, originally, we had a rock back here where this orange light is right here, and we had it lit, but I think we're just going to remove that. Oop. Gross. Let's try that again. Just going to grab some of that there. Here we go. Um, okay, so... Meg, you asked, what do you think helped you the most to speed up your workflow to meet deadlines? Um, learning how to handle what a deadline is, I think is what helped me the most because you can have a ton of different softwares and a ton of different processes on how to make things faster. But if you don't know how to manage the timeline to begin with, then you are just going to screw yourself. So like, uh, when it comes to anything that's a deadline, a be the best way I've come to approach it, which I think I mentioned in the first stream, was uh, let's say you have a deadline, go ahead and break it up, uh, no matter what it is, like just break it up into smaller pieces. So if you have like, they're like, oh, we need this done within a month. Okay, so break it up weekly. So now you have four weekly goals, and then by the time you've met all four of those goals, you've done the deadline. Granted, I wouldn't make it where you finish it on the deadline because because no matter what you do <clears throat> in life ever <laughs> there will be something to go wrong and uh, your plans will just be have to adapt so instead of having it planned perfectly to finish it on that day plan to finish it like somewhere within a week before or a few days before so that way you have some breathing room in case I don't know your computer explodes or like, I don't know, the, the, the whole world's internet goes out and you're like, crap, now I can't send in my deadline. <laughs> you know, not worried about the apocalypse. You're just like, no, my deadline, I didn't meet it. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, the best, the best thing that I think is just to, how to approach a deadline is just to break it up. And that was probably the best thing that helped me for managing deadlines um, to speed up the workflow itself to make sure I meet the like short deadlines uh, is to focus and I, I, I preach this a lot is to focus more on the mood of what you're designing and the idea of what you're designing less on the polished part of what you're designing now if you're doing like matte paint or something that's going to be used directly in film then of course yeah you're going to have to make it look like it's real and not brush strokes and everything like that and not broken. Uh, but when it's like you're designing and it's concept art or you're creating a project or something like that, um, then yeah, you can just focus more on like what you want people to feel from it and what you want people to see in it and less about, oh, is this rock perfectly rendered? You know, like that kind of thing also helps a lot. Uh, because if you have a client and you're like, hey, um, I know the deadline was today, but last night I spent four hours on this rock. Now, now, now hear me out. <laughs> I know you wanted this entire piece of a city, but I didn't get to that. I got to this rock and this rock is looking sick, but the, but you know, the city didn't happen. Like they will probably fire you. <laughs> so <clears throat> you definitely focus on like the main point of the piece uh, or the main point of your project and what you want to uh, put out, you know, with with the project. So that's why, like, for example, uh, these bottom left and bottom right areas, I haven't put a whole lot of th uh, thought process into them, and that's why they're like not as interesting to look at. And that's what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to fix is um, I want them to be somewhat interesting to look at, but they don't have to be that crazy because the whole point of this piece is right here. <clears throat> the whole point of this piece is the uh, the meeting between Yukiko and Aki. So, do I need everything on the sides to look phenomenal? No. If I spent six hours refining the trees on the sides, will it make the piece look better? Maybe. But, like, will it change the idea? No. So then, why do it? Uh, 
unless you know the client specifically asks that they want the piece fully rendered out i usually just don't um do it because one i think it feels cooler to have like the brokenness to it but then two like what's the point like um if you're just doing a concept design and you're just exploring ideas and figuring out a scene and you're not trying to make it the best piece you've ever made uh like you know like of course you want every piece you make to be the best piece you ever made but unfortunately that's not the way that works uh but whenever you're making the piece um you don't want to spend too much time on it uh, you don't want it to be like something that you spent three weeks on when you could have spent three weeks on the entire project in a total so yeah i mean you know sometimes you got to just learn when to not like do something i think that's i think that's a key one as well it's like when when do i stop <laughs> when when do i just like not do this thing and work on this thing instead um so <clears throat> that's actually why i made the streams um for three hours each uh one to challenge myself when to stop and then two um challenge myself to show you guys how to make like the focus of a piece before you worry about everything else because I only have three hours to make it. So, you know, you gotta, gotta keep the ball rolling. We got music to talk about. I got cough drops, <laughs> you know, like <coughs> we gotta, you know, we gotta get going here. Um, so I hope that answered. I hope that mon that villain monologue somewhere in there uh, answered that question. Um, mm -hmm. Now, this bottom right is looking cool. Bottom left is not. So we're going to uh, just kind of constantly wear around, see what happens. Gross. Uh, we're just going to, yeah. I, I like this kind of broken clusterness. Uh, you're going to see some edges come out being smooth. That's fine. Like this, like this kind of smoothness right here. Uh, that's fine because we can just always fix that later um, uh, as she said you planned this before the five episodes or did you improvise on the way so um, I had an idea for the uh, we, we plan we planned six episodes but as far as like what the pieces would be I had I did not have an idea um, <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> I had a, a general vague vision of like this piece, uh, uh, like I wanted this piece to be something cool like this, but um, for the prop design sheet and for the city scene, uh, pfft, I had no idea. <laughs> and then uh, you can see, <clears throat> you can see in the first stream when I did the, uh, the art Bible that I started with nothing and the art Bible because I wanted to show the process of like finding images and references and like sparking your brain to like start thinking about things uh, and making things a bit easier for you as far as coming up with cool ideas. Um, so did I sit down and like have a calendar saying like on this day, we're going to make this exact piece. No, no, I did not. I uh, probably could have, but I, I think it, I think it feels more, um, I wanted to show you guys more like realistically, if a client comes up to you, how would I, how would I approach it? And, uh, generally speaking, I don't have an exact mind or exact thought in my head of like what each shot is going to be until I get to that shot. So like, I like, so for example, with the deadline, <clears throat> if, if it was like a month and they're like, we have to have, I mean, it's a lot this is a long time for just like four shots, but let's say we had to have four shots done in a month. Um, then I would just break up like, all right, that's one shot a week. Um, probably like one and a half just to kind of make sure I got some breathing room. And I would just like, I, I would have like a general narrative of each shot, but like what the shot would be would just completely evolve as I did it. Uh, I, I don't have, <clears throat> I don't think I have the capacity to, uh, completely render out in my head every shot before I even start. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I can do that, honestly. <laughs> I, uh, my shots uh, or my pieces always just like evolve as we do them. Um, so yeah, 
but that explained it. Oh, and I'm glad I'm glad Meg that the villain monologue helped. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm <clears throat> I'm trying to break up this perfect wall here. See this like it's going like this. It's like it's just a perfect wall. I'm trying to break that up in interesting ways, and Content Aware likes to do its own thing, but uh, it's kind of working in a way that I want it to, so you can see that I'm kind of just grabbing certain spots and figuring it out. Uh, the reason why I'm grabbing different spots is because Content Aware will do the same thing over and over. So like if you have, let's say I just grab a spot and I just Content Aware and then undo it and then Content Aware, it's gonna be the exact same thing every time because it's the same exact pixels that are chosen. If you, however, remove one pixel and then do it, it's gonna be a little bit different. Or if you remove a lot of pixels and then do it, it's gonna be completely different, you know? So you'll see that instead of me trying to fix a selection and then kind of clean it up and do like that, I'll just grab a different area because at some point it's gonna grab something completely different and uh, make it look cool. Now, the content aware I was just doing um, has made a tangent line here. It's, it's like a, you can kind of see it. There's a line here that goes straight here and then here and then like implied here. So it's creating like a line in the image, which I don't want. Uh, not that they're actually connected or anything. It's just, it's just there. So I'm going to try to content aware that out and break that up a bit. Uh, there we go. All right, so I think this is broken enough on the bottom left to where it's more interesting to look at. Uh, so we are going to fix it. So that's the way I roll. I break it and then I fix it. Um, I don't I don't break it and buy it. I break it and I fix it and I give it back. <laughs> so uh, let's, uh, let's grab some of this grass color. I think that'd be cool. Um, something like that, I think. <coughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so back to video games while I'm... Uh, essentially, what I'm going to do right now... It, I, feel like, I feel like a doctor, like... All right, so what we're going to do... No, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to... Uh, just kind of blend in this, like, grass color into the broken areas to kind of make it uh, make sense. Uh, as far as, like, design and perspective and whatnot. So while I'm doing that... Um, you'll see that I'm following the rule that I told you about where I paint in the direction of the surface so that way it creates a contour line using just the brush strokes. Um, now, back to video games. Um, yeah, so for the video games, uh, Gray and Blue came out, it was cool, I beat it. Um, really liked some of the characters, like uh, Zeta's really cool, she's got a cool design. And then Cagliostro, she's got a really cool story. She's super goofy. But um, the the other thing that came out this week was Persona 3 uh, Reload, which is like a remaster of Persona 3 for the PS5. And it is great. Uh, I am a fan of Persona. I never got... <clears throat> That's the thing about Persona games, right? Is I, I never got extremely far in Persona 5 because like by the time I was like, oh yeah, I gotta be getting close to the end of the game, the game just started. Like <laughs> it's, it's such a long game. And I have no problem with long games. It's just like, man, I was just like, uh, a lot happened and then we're just still going. You know, it's been like 20 or 30 hours. Um, so I, I just uh, usually will play like a bunch of different games instead of focusing on one game for an eternity. Uh, my friend's wife, on the other hand, is the opposite, where she has played Final Fantasy XIV, uh, which I, you know, we, we played it and we beat it, but she has never stopped playing it. And uh, I think she, last we checked, was at like, I think they said something like 5,000 hours into Final Fantasy XIV at this point, uh, which is insane. Um, but, if you break up all the games that I like to play, like Kingdom Hearts and um, whatnot. Yeah, of course, T-Scar. Um, keep in mind that the next stream is a like a community stream. So I'll be looking at 
um, whatever you guys want me to look at really like if you if you post your projects into the concept art channel I'll look at them I'll kind of feedback on you tell you like what you did right what you did or what you did really cool what could have done better um, or if you have let's say like some art pieces or your art station or something uh, feel free to link it in the concept art channel and I can look at them and see like uh, you know like what cool stuff you have and talk about stuff that you could do or you could try or whatever you know just kind of hang out chat for three hours in the next stream and uh, the next stream and uh just look at all y'all's cool stuff um so yeah um <clears throat> back to video games well let's talk about persona right yeah um oh it's final fantasy yeah yeah so my friend's wife has played like five thousand hours in final fantasy 14 if you combine all the hours I've played in Kingdom Hearts, um, I'm definitely in the, th in the thousands. But um, 5,000 hours in one game, that's a lot. And I don't know. I'm, I'm at like a, almost 1,000 in Rocket League. <laughs> Me and my friend, uh, we play Rocket League a lot. And I honestly would like to know how many hours I had in Rock Band. Because uh, uh, off camera here, I have my drum set. And... Me and my friend, at one point in time, he used to live with us, and we just played it like daily, um, and we never stopped playing it pretty much daily ever since it came out, Rock Band 1. So we uh, we basically <clears throat> just like became beasts at the game, and um, uh, so yeah, Rock Band 1 came out in like high school, I think, middle school, somewhere in time there. Somewhere around, somewhere around that. And um, I played the drums. He played a guitar. And we essentially just never stopped playing it and just kept buying DLC songs. And um, I think the last time we checked, which was on Rock Band 4, which, to be honest, is like the worst one. It came out kind of broken and buggy. Um, but we... <laughs> this is something that I always talk about that I should put on my resume. Uh... In the world, I was at the time. This was a couple. This was a few years ago. Um, I was 180 in the world on expert drums, and then or expert pro drums. And um, uh, my friend was in the top one percent on expert guitar. Um, so, you know, we. Uh, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think we will ever beat that. Uh, in any other game as far as like being on a leaderboard or something uh so that's always funny it's like yeah what's up babe i'm you know i'm a top 180 in the world on electronic drums for rock band specifically <laughs> uh so yeah uh right now i'm just cleaning up things i'm not really thinking about it uh i'm just making things cleaner so this is a very interesting part of the process where you just kind of shut your brain off and just start making things look less messy um this is a fun part of the process not because the actual you know detailing part part is fun but because uh you have now relieved stress because the stressful part is like coming up with the idea of what you're actually painting but um once you've got past that all it is is just cleaning it up and you know making it rendered out so you don't really have to worry about the stress of like, oh no, what do I do? Is this cool? Whatever. You've got it designed, um, so now you just have to clean it up. And uh, it's it's great. Like once you get to this, this is kind of like, um, imagine imagine these streams being a, as a week, all right? There's six streams, so let's say six days of work. Um, so I gener generally though, I don't work just three hours a day, but you know, whatever. Um, so <clears throat> imagine that Monday would have been stream one. So Monday I would have been researching and like figuring out what I was even attempting to do. And then Tuesday would have been working on the key art. Wednesday would have been the, the prop design. And then Thursday would have been the, uh, the last one we did. And now this is the, uh, this is Friday. The deadline is coming up to have it done by Monday or to have it done before you leave on Friday. But 
because you went through all the process of everything before, you pretty much have relieved any kind of stress because you're just, at this point, just cleaning things up. So you just kind of put on some music and uh, just chill and just not like worry about it and just kind of just make it as clean as you can. There is no like level of clean that is acceptable over a different level of clean. It's more of just as long as the main point is readable, which it is, you know, they meet in the middle. And then uh, you have the story being told in a clean way, then it doesn't really matter how clean the image actually is. Um, as you can see right now, I'm just adding in some like gestured um, idea that there's something here just to add a little bit of a interesting element to look at. Just kind of do like this, like that. Um, add a bit of green to it, I think. That. Fix this up a bit. Like that, that looks cool, I think. Has a little bit of an interesting little shape language. Shape language is another thing you have to think about sometimes, well, pretty much all the time, um, where sharp is bad, round is good. That's like the classic cartoon thing where like every villain will have like a super sharp face, like a villain's face will look like this, whereas the main character's face will end up looking more like this kind of thing. So you'll have a round shape for the hero, triangle for the bad. That can be taken into um, environment design as well. So we don't want any of this to feel like evil or dark or bad. So we have a bunch of flow to it. So we have this like wind flowing on him. We have this rounded, uh, tombstones, this rounded rock here, this kind of like rounded roofs, um, and the general kind of flow of the gate as well goes like that. Um, same thing. So the more flowy it is, the less intimidating and scary the piece will feel, which is great because we don't want this piece to feel uh, either of those way, e that way, in those ways. There we go. Um, so. Yeah, um, so yeah, Persona 3, uh, it's cool. I like the art style a lot. One of the coolest pause menus I've ever seen. Um, when you pause it, it does like this underwater thing. It's very like modern Japanese style, but it's, it's cool. And um, uh, then Suicide Squad also came out this week. Boy, howdy, what a launch on that. Um, <laughs> people were freaking out. So. We waited until Friday, which is when the game was supposed to actually come out. However, if you bought the $100 version, which I think is not the smartest decision, um, but if you bought the $100 version, it would give you early access to the game on Monday. Uh, the reason why I said it's not the smartest decision is not because I'm judging people for what they buy, but because uh, if it's a live or if it's an online game like Suicide Squad is, if you buy it to play early, generally what will happen is the servers will crash um, because for whatever reason, as humankind has evolved, uh, or you know, as advanced in society, we have yet to figure out how to not crash the servers on day one. <laughs> so <coughs> the servers will crash uh, because they pretty much always have on like the first day. So if you buy, pay a bunch of money to play it early, and it's an online game, you may end up risking yourself just getting into a crash server and then not being able to play it even though you paid early. So that's what happened. Uh, however, it didn't just crash. Uh, what was interesting about it is uh, it actually like did a weird bug that I've never heard of before. Um, never heard of like a game doing before where it auto completed the game. So like people, People got online to play it, and then the game said, like, congratulations, you beat the game. So then, like, their game registered them as beating the game when they haven't even 
like they just turned the game on and that's such a weird bug and i've yet to figure out how that happened like 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 program programmatically like what caused that to happen so they shut down the servers within the first hour of release and uh uh had to fix it but I, Friday, when it came out, and we played it regularly, didn't have any problems. So, whatever it was, they fixed it. And um, uh, I was joking to my friend, like, see, man, if we <laughs> if we bought it early, we could have just beat it on day one. <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Like, I, I'm, I'm curious to know, like, what would cause that to happen. I, I'm just not sure uh, what would cause the game to autocomplete like that. And... The only thing I could think of would be like on a server side, maybe the server has like a tick that it has to check for, and uh, maybe it freaked out and it and it checked that that person completed the game when in reality they didn't. Not sure. Um, but is it a very interesting bug for sure? Instead of it just being like, oh, the game crashed, like, oh no, you beat the game. But I, what? I don't even know how to jump. What? <laughs> uh. That's um that's another running joke that me and my friends have with how to jump. So if we play a new game and one of us asks what are the controls, um, we will say X is jump or X is not jump. The reason why is because if it's a regular game that uh, follows the standards of like modern controls, then X on the PlayStation will generally be jump. Uh, that's just like the usual rule. But uh, if it is a game that is trying to be different, like Dying Light or um, something like that, then uh, X will not be jump. And we will just say X is not jump. So <clears throat> if we're playing a weird game, we're like, oh, dude, yeah, X is not jump. Because like your brain is freaking out. Like L1 is jump. That's a weird one. When the, when the shoulder button is jump. Which I understand that in Dying Light, you want the shoulder button to be jump because it's um, like a parkour game. So you want to have X to be like something else. But in a game like Oblivion or uh, Skyrim with triangle being jump, that's just weird. Like, nah, I'm good, man. Like, <laughs> why is triangle jump? That just, that always bothered me. Uh, I got used to it, you know, as you play. It's not like it's hard to get used to. I just, I'm just thinking about like in their head, why would they do that? And if they're, if Bethesda's like, oh, well, it's because, you know, our old games had it. I'm like, okay, well, the old game, that's not like a great excuse because the old games, um, like uh, Kingdom Hearts, the first one, also didn't have where you could control the camera with the stick. You had to control the camera with the uh, triggers. So you're like, uh, L2 and R2 to move the camera left and right. That's not great. So uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't use this excuse like oh well our old games had it. That's fine, but you know maybe don't do that. <laughs> maybe maybe do something else. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to do here or what I'm doing is um, I'm adding a bit of color difference as well. So you can see that I added um, some warm kind of value behind the statues kind of push them in and out but on the right here um i'm going to do a cool color because it's near the fox and i think you'd be kind of glowy so um i'm just going to do like a deep blue here kind of thing like that i think mm -hmm. um looking at it though that round rock's got to go this is gonna go A little bit different. Yeah, that's better. All right. So <clears throat> we are running out of time here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this real quick and uh, go ahead. Oops, don't want that. Thank you. Just do a little bit of grass in there. A little bit of that. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to noodle this in. Make it feel more like it's been rendered in there. And um, we're going to adjust the values real quick. 
and then we're going to adjust the um, the uh, the ethereal wind that we need to add to the image, uh, just for like a last little tidbit. So first, the lighting. Uh, to do that, it's easier if it's all in one layer, which we're on. So we're going to first auto tone does nothing, auto contrast does nothing, and auto color doesn't do much. So if you do the autos, if you do one of these three autos and nothing changes on your image, that's kind of like a cool point in the image because that means that like any value adjustments you do is more creative and less obvious because the AI can't even be like, I don't know what to change. So um, we're just going to kind of darken the corners here, just, 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 just a little bit, not like too much. And uh, this is not to create a vignette for the image, but to create a bit of a, uh, uh, to kind of lessen how much you're looking on the edges here. You don't want like a full vignette around the image. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to brighten the middle because that's where we want them to be looking. All up in there. Okay. Have the fox be super clear in the middle as well. Like that. And then uh, probably brighten up the lighting itself. It's coming this way. Okay, and you can see before and after. How's it look? It's looking cool. Okay. Uh, I don't like this grass being flat right here because it creates like a short leg. That's what, like, it, like th your brain thinks this is a foot, even though the foot's actually down here somewhere. So we're just gonna kind of break that off um, with some painting. Yep. So now we have an obvious rock here. And a rock a little bit. Add some color variation to it. You never just want a green rock, you know? Grass has different colors in it. <clears throat> so you want green, yellows, <clears throat> very natural colors. And then any kind of flowers, you know, reds, blues, whatever. Um, okay, so the fox is glowy. So we're gonna go ahead and add a bit of a color dodge of his blue, like that. Perfect. <laughs> um, <coughs> we're gonna put it over here. We're gonna glow him in the shadows, but not so much in the front because we want him to feel like he's glowing back here. Um, something like that. And then um, we're gonna add some of these like, I, we keep calling them, or I keep calling them spectral flakes, but like this like etherealness to him. Um, Something like uh, do, 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 normal. So I have this brush that kind of adds them for us. You can see it. See how it adds like these little specks that are floating around. Um, we're gonna do that, but with the brightest, the brightest color here. And we're gonna have it kind of just, kind of just coming off, coming off of them a little bit. A bit more saturated, I think. A bit more blue. Less teal. Whoops. No. We messed up the color dodge. How dare we? Too much. There we go. And then, bam. All right. So now we grab that brush again. There we go. Color dodge. We're gonna just do normal. And then just bring some of that in there. This may not come up well on YouTube because YouTube doesn't like very busy images. So like once the live stream is over, if you wanna come back and see it in a higher res, you can. But also I plan on um, <clears throat> posting all of these images that we worked on on my art station, uh, which I will 
um, I can show you the link. Or I can show you my art station here in case you want to check it out later. Um, this is my art station. Uh, it's just Josh Durham, super easy to find. And uh, this is where I will post all of the images that we've created uh, throughout the streams, but I will do it um, probably, you know, later, like not this weekend, <laughs> but uh, that way you guys can see the full res image, uh, not just YouTube's great compression ruining everything. Um, all right, so let's just add some more of these like floaty bits. Cool. Now I do also want to add uh, some of that red um, floating around. Something like, like, hmm, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, something like that's fine. Just, just to add a little bit of red to the image. It could just be like a falling leaf or something, but uh, I think it's fine like that. Now, <clears throat> falling leaves, uh, we can add that real quick and then we'll probably call it there. So let's find some leaves. Um, falling leaves. Mm -hmm. Now we may have to paint the leaves in. That may be what we have to do. Because trying to find a picture of just a group of leaves falling is kind of not easy. Um, hmm. All right, we're painting them in. So to do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, grab probably this one. Yeah, I'm just kind of just do it like that. Nah. Mm. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to do that same brush I was using. Oops. Actually, I think this is the one, right? This is my leaf brush. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is my <laughs> brush I made uh, a very long time ago where I just did a bunch of shapes um, and then put them in together, and it makes like cut grass kind of vibe. Um, but it works for like falling leaves if you uh, if you do it carefully. So if we just do a couple here in the middle, um, I guess like that, and then let's make them red. No, make them bright. All the way through. Make them stand out so I know where they are. <clears throat> These ones over here on the edges can go away. So we'll just delete those. Uh, delete that one. Cool, 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 sweet, cool, done, cool. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So, yeah, so like. If you cover half the image, you have this um, left side is very red, kind of warm. But then on the right side, if you cover the half the image, you got the cool colors from the fox and the shadows. So that's what I, I'm kind of going for. Um, all right, so I think that's pretty much good. I mean, we could uh, we could fix her sh her shirt. Her shirt's a little bright, I think. Um, so let's do that. Let's uh, darken this. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. So let's darken that just a little bit. And then brighten around her, make her stand out a bit. Okay, a little edge here, get rid of that. All right. Um, cool, cool. Now for the fox, we could probably add a bit more detailing on his back now that it's there. So we can kind of just do this thing here. And that'll be like the max that we're gonna detail on his back and then we can kind of just cut it out. Just 
keep it like that probably. And then do a little uh, little dubers in detail. Like that. Maybe right there. Here. I'm trying to keep it again like um, like a design, but uh, not like uh, sort of thinking of here. Not like super perfect. You know, I want to I want to make sure it looks like like a painted marking on this guy. Um, okay, let's do that. And that there. Put it there. And then a big one here, one there, there, and there. Okay, and then we're just gonna grab this color, do a different layer, paint it in, paint in some of the brighter bits. And then the reason why I did it on a different layer is because now we can delete this part of the fur up here, make his fur stand back out. There we go. Cool. Cool. So now we've had the image cleaned up. Um, I can show you before and after of when we started. So let me uh, merge them into one. All right, so when we started today, it looked like that. Um, well, it looked like that, actually. <clears throat> uh, so when we started today, it looked like that. And then we just turned it into that, All right? So it may not feel like it's changed by a lot, but we did do a lot, you know? We changed things, we designed more, we cleaned up some things and broke more things. So uh, overall, you know, it's different. Um, what if I... Content aware here, what happens? Nah, okay. So that's cool. Um, if you want a real morale boost, you can look at the sketch that we started with, which was uh, <laughs> uh, this sketch. So that was the original idea. Uh, Ashish, this was um, what we started with. And that was just a general vague idea of the shot that I had in mind. <clears throat> and then uh, it turned into that. So, you know, it's good to kind of keep these layers on there just for your own morale boost. Just to be like, wow, I did something. Because <laughs> <coughs> if you get lost in the details, you'll tend to forget like how much you've actually done um, with the piece. So... Uh, now I'm going to sign it. Uh, normally you don't have to sign it if this is like your own project uh, because you're just putting it in your art Bible anyways. But I'm going to sign it just to show you uh, an interesting way to, or a way to make your signature look interesting um, or look more formal, I guess. So what I normally do, I know some people have like crazy signatures, but what I normally do is I'll grab a color from the piece so that way it blends into the piece itself. Um, it doesn't like just stand out so hard in the corner. So I'm gonna grab some of this like red, um, probably like this one. And then um, I am go ahead and just make a line and then sign it, date it. I, I just date with the year because uh, like I, I, nobody needs to know the month and the day that I did something. Um, and then just kind of flatten it like this and it'll, it'll essentially italicize it, clean it up, and then put it in the corner that you want it to be in, wherever you want it to go. And then because it's so bright, uh, lower the levels on it to about like there. So that way your signature is there, but it's not distracting. So now you can see the piece is fine, but then if uh, anybody ever saw the signature or anybody wanted to know where it came from, they could see the signature down here and be like, oh, okay, 
you know, this is that person's. Um, so n the reason why I say normally you don't sign it um, is because if you're working for a company or something, they'll put their logo there. Um, so like Ubisoft would put like the Ubisoft uh, purple sphere that they used to have. They would put that like there, something like that. Or like the name of the project, like if it says uh, Uncharted or something, then you would put like the Uncharted logo here. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's good. So we can go ahead and save that. And um, if you, another little tidbit if you want to try it. I do this, but not everybody does. Um, if you take your image and go to filter and go to sharpen, um, just do it once and it'll it'll crank out some of the detail in your images and it'll, what it does is it blends in your painting brush strokes with the detail of the um, photo assets that you used. The issue is that I don't always do it because in this image alone, it's really busy with like all the tree leaves and stuff. So if I sharpen it, it becomes really busy because the tree leaves become super sharp. So I'm actually just gonna leave it not sharpened um, and just go from there. I think that'll be fine. Yeah, it's super, super busy if I sharpen it in the middle there. So yeah, we'll just leave it unsharpened. It'll be right. Um, so that's that. Uh, now, next week, just a reminder, it, we're going to stream one last time, uh, but next week's stream will be a community feedback stream. So if you have any art that you want somebody to look at, like you want me to look at, um, if you have a project you've been working on you want me to look at, or whatever, um, just post it in the Concept Art channel and, you know, like tag me in it, say like, at Josh Durham, look at this next week, um, or something like that. And... Um, I'll send you, you know next week whenever the stream comes around we'll just uh, I'll go through y'all's art and we can talk about them and see what you did and see what you came up with so uh, I'm probably just gonna close it there um, but uh, no man I'm terrible just ending things sorry hold on there we go there was a uh, there's a little red it's a little red duber right there it needs to go get out of here you going you gonna, yeah get out of here be gone. Thank you. All right. Um, so this is what I mean by like learning to stop. <laughs> the image is not finished as far as like uh, refined and um, rendered out, but your deadline's here. So you got to stop. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, no worries, Ian. Uh, feel free to watch it at any time. And I was just letting them know that, you know, next week is the community feedback. So uh, yeah, so um, that should be it, and we'll probably just call it there. So I hope you guys have a great Saturday uh, or great Sunday, depending on what time zone you're in at the moment. And um, yeah, just go play some video games, hang out with friends, uh, and you know, watch some movies, do something. I don't know, whatever you want to do. But <laughs> either way, I hope you have a great time. Thank you for joining me, and uh, hopefully. Uh, you learned something out of my rambling. So I will see you guys next weekend at the same time for the final stream. So bye.